Welcome everyone to today's discussion on mitigating hurricane impact through construction practices. I'm your host Steven and today we have with us Abel Gray Kantoma, a seasoned civil engineer with extensive experience in designing resistance structures. Uh, welcome uh, Abel. So, to kick off things, let's delve into the fundamentals. Could you provide an in-depth explanation of the primary causes of hurricane, touching on the various atmospheric and oceanic conditions that contribute to their formation, and discuss why these natural phenomena are capable of such widespread and devastating destruction? All right. Uh, thank you for that question. Um, well, when it comes to hurricane, um, I'm going to mention but a few uh, that could cause um, uh, that I will say that are the primary causes of hurricane. Uh, one ocean temperature could result to that. Uh, in the case where you have moist air uh, over tropical ocean waters, um, this could uh, result to hurricane the atmospheric instability that is where you have uh, a warm or a moist air that rises now this could uh, create areas of no pressure okay in that case um, the atmospheric instability uh, will most likely allow the air to continue rising which could fuel the hurricane development okay um, and then the third one uh, is Coriolis effect the Coriolis effect uh, is as a result of uh, the earth temperature okay now this could uh, cause the rising of air to spin okay uh, that could create this characteristic spiral shape of uh, a hurricane so uh, that is that. Okay, so um, given the destructive nature of hurricanes, what are some key practices that construction professionals can implement to mitigate their impact? Um, okay, um, like you know, hurricane uh, is very destructive. And uh, I'm just quickly going to uh, list uh, some of uh, these measures that uh, construction professionals should uh, implement to mitigate it to the barest minimum, okay? Uh, building code, very important. Uh, the structural reinforcement is very, very important. Uh, roof and windows uh, protection, backup power system, very important. Uh, landscape design, it's actually very important. Disaster planning and uh, preparedness collaboration and training is very very important okay uh, when you engage with industry organization government agency and local communities to share best practices okay uh, these are few among many that i could mention uh, at this point okay um, thanks for those insights. Now, shifting uh, our focus towards coastal areas which are particularly vulnerable to the impact of hurricanes, can you elaborate on the types of infrastructure projects and specific steps that can be undertaken to protect these areas from the dual threats of storm surges and flooding? Okay, um, well, to, to protect the coastal areas, uh, there are several key steps uh, that can be taken, like the coastal defense structures, uh, structures like the sea walls, the levees, the breakwaters. Uh, this will act as a physical barrier against the incoming uh, storms, okay, and, and waves, okay. Um, elevation and uh, flood proofing. Um, the the elevate critical infrastructure such as roads, uh, bridges and buildings to ensure that they remain above the expected floor level. Uh, like you know, you need to do a study of uh, uh, return period. Okay, there, there are always uh, uh, 
uh, flood return period. Uh, these are very important drainage and stormwater management. Um, this could enhance the stormwater drainage system, um, including upgrading culverts, canals, detention pond uh, in TC. Uh, early warning system, very important. Uh, land use planning and zoning, ecosystem uh, restoration and management, public awareness and education. Uh, this could uh, go a very long way. Um, so that is that. All right. So um, let's delve into the lessons learned from the previous hurricanes. From your extensive experience, can you share some of the pivotal insights and key lessons that construction professionals have gleaned from uh, past hurricanes regarding the importance of building resilience and how these lessons have been applied to improve construction practices and enhance overall security? All right. Um, well, um, from past experience, I will say the, the construction professionals have uh, learned several key lessons on building uh, resilience. Um, one of the key important uh, lessons I will say uh, is importance of building codes and standards. Uh, emphasis on structural uh, integrity, like uh, reinforcing the structural elements of a building, such as uh, like your foundations, your walls, and roofs, uh, to better withstand the forces of hurricane. Uh, you know the vulnerability of uh, critical infrastructures, uh, importance of site selections and, and design, like careful consideration of your. Uh, construction sites, locations, and elevation, especially in coastal areas, in order for you to minimize the risks of storm and, and, and surge. Okay, collaboration and community engagement, uh, uh, adaptability, and continuous uh, learning. Okay, uh, these are a few among many that I can point out uh, right now. Okay, so um, I have one more last question. What strategies and measures can African construction professionals adopt to enhance their preparedness and resilience in addressing the increasing environmental hazards, such as earthquakes and flood, that have devastating impact on buildings? How can they learn from international best practices and adapt them to the unique challenges and context of the African con continent? Um, well, African construction professionals can really uh, adopt several strategies and measures to ensure their preparedness and resilience in uh, addressing the increasing environmental hazard. Okay, these hazards such as uh, the hurricane, the earthquakes, uh, and flood. Okay, um, they really really have a great impact on building infrastructures and uh, communities uh, at large okay uh, africa can learn from this international best practice and adopt them to the unique challenges and, and context of uh, african continent okay um, africa can develop effective solutions uh, that could mitigate the effect of these uh, natural uh, disasters. Um, it's like uh, coming back to all these things I have mentioned before as regards to strengthening the building codes and uh, standard, you know, promoting the resilient construction uh, techniques, the integrating disaster risk reduction um in urban planning okay uh just to mention uh, but a a few you know promoting knowledge sharing and capacity building okay this could uh, go a very long way for africans